Welcome back. You are watching Digital Trends. This is day three of CES 2018, live from Las Vegas. Hey there, Maud Garrett here. And joining me at the table, we're talking emerging tech. So, of course, we've got Drew Prindle here. Hey, Drew. How's it going? Good. Now, we're talking about the tech awards that are happening with DT, and there's so much emerging tech that you get not one, but four different awards to try and cover it all. What, what are some of those awards? Uh, so, this year, uh, the big winners were, you know, in the drone category was the first one. Uh, also gave an award to a 3D printer. Hey. Uh, and uh, rideables were another big thing this year, as in like rideable technologies, personal transportation vehicles. Right. So those were really the three big categories that I uh, gave awards to this year. Glad that you mentioned 3D printing, because it is huge at the moment, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger every year as the technology expands. And we're going to talk to Monoprice 3D Printing. To do that, we've got Shane Igo, who is the VP of Product Management there. Hey, Shane. Hi. So we've been talking about your CES, and it's been absolutely jam-packed, Phil. Yeah. But you've got new products that you are super proud of. Let's talk about yeah. some of those. So the first one we have here is uh, we got into 3D printing a few years back, and we really were focusing on making products that functioned, that worked, that weren't just toys, that were something that anybody can come and use. Um, so we have our mini, this is the next version of it, where it's the best selling printer in the world. After this last year, it's just been, it's been great. You say um, it's not just the best selling, but it's the best selling by quite a margin. By, it's probably three times the next best seller. That's in incredible. The world. That's something definitely you shouldn't be. So, yeah, we're really excited about it. And what that's doing is it allowing a lot more people to experience 3D printing. There was a lot of hype around it a few years back, and that kind of seemed to dull out. There wasn't as much innovation, so we really want to get back in there and do something that was a, a tool, not just a toy. Um, and there's a lot of, a lot of people know CAD. A lot of people are learning CAD as early as elementary school. My boys are. Um, so you can take that, you can come home, and you can really print out things that just unlock creativity. So we, we launched this uh, back a year, and, a year and a little bit ago. Uh, this is now our V3. Uh, so this is a right out of the box, you can start printing. Um, what we added this year, we have auto leveling. So you don't need to even learn how to level your bed. Um, and then also we have a touch screen. So you can interface and you can, you can do uh, different functions that you're not going to be able to, to get to on a printer 10 times the cost. All that for um, 200, right around $200. Right here? Yeah. That in your hand? Yep. And I did notice that when you just casually picked it up, it was with one hand and it was effortless. How much does this thing weigh? Uh, it weighs about 12, 13 pounds. Something like that. Okay, so you're just really strong as well. <laughs> okay, good to know. Drew, have you got questions about this? Yes, yeah, so this is V3. I, I got a chance to play with version one. What's, mm -hmm. what's new in V3? I mean, aside from the, the bed leveling, is there, is there a new price? Is it or more or less the same thing? So we've been able to keep the price. We really want to, make, to get more and more people into this market. Um, so this is kind of our entry, one of their entry points to it, um, where you don't need to know too much, but it's able to be expanded. So actually, what we've been doing uh, through the last year and change is there's a big community. So there's a Facebook group with over 7,000 people who are talking about it, playing with it, modding it. Um, so we have a lot of different changes that we've done on the, on the hot end, on the boards, on the heaters, all these types of things to just make it better and better and better. I do have a question about 3D printing. You said that it, you know, when it was first on the market, it had a huge amount of excitement uh, because of the innovation, but then it kind of lulled a little bit. Mm -hmm. For me, when I think 3D printing, there is such an expansive array of opportunities of what you can print. And for me, that's a little intimidating because I'm not creative enough to really be specific about what I need. What are some of the things that people have been using in very innovative ways with your 3D printer? So there are people who go out and um, go into developing countries, will print out prosthetics for people who would never be able to afford prosthetics. You have people who are just um, coming and learning how to um, develop do uh, prototyping, so they have the next great idea. Rather than coming up with, uh, you know, spending twenty thousand dollars on tooling, they're coming up. They're able to do low production runs. So we actually have people who have, you know, twenty of these hooked up, and they can start actually producing uh, and getting up on Etsy, getting up on uh, Amazon, different places, and starting to get out to the market. Um, one of the fun things that I like to do with it, I uh, recently we, me and uh, my boys, we did a hike in Yosemite. Uh, so we got to walk around all these different things in the valley, which is awesome. And we got to come home, USGS, you can take one of some of their topos, and you can actually print out a scale model of that. So we got to see from a different dimension, uh, you know, from all different di directions, how, what we hiked through, why things looked away from one angle, from another. So it really is from practical to unlocking a lot of potentials and, and hopefully a lot more creativity. All right, so 
Let's switch gears here for a minute. Can we talk about the elephant in the room or the, the 3D printer in the room, this, this big guy right next to me right here? Great. So this is what we're announcing. Uh, one of the products we're announcing at CS. We're really excited about this. Uh, so this is one of the, the mini is the, one of the entry points. What we wanted to do is be able to provide a, a next step for people. So this is our Delta Pro. Um, this is coming out in a, in a few months. And what it is able to do is takes the build volume, so how large of a product, how large of a piece you're able to build, and multiplies it by 10. Uh, one of the problems with that is it to build something 10 times as big, it takes a long time. So we also have the speed where it goes at least twice as fast as what you can do on the Mini. Um, so that vase has been printing for about 45 minutes. Um, in about three hours, you can have uh, a vase like this, which is about nine, nine inches tall. What's and great part, detail. What are the materials that you're using to make this? So it's a heated print bed, so you can use PLA, you can use ABS. There's a lot of different options that you have available, and there's a lot of materials that are out there. So we, all of our printers work with any kind of filament that's out on the market. We don't, we don't force you into proprietary. Um, we, have our own, we have our own filament, which is great, but we really want people to be able to, uh, to do what they, what they want. So this is new at the show. This is, is you guys unveiled this here. Yeah. What's the uh, what's the price point on this guy? So this is right around a thousand dollars, a little over a thousand dollars. So it's still two hundred dollars. You can get into the get into the market. Thousand dollars, you're going to be able to uh, still be within the affordable range. You know, something that a few years ago you would not never be able to touch any 3D printer, let alone one that works really well um, for anything close to that. Yeah. So this is basically a a bigger version of the the Mini Delta. Yeah, exactly. I, I wanted to talk about that for a minute because the Mini Delta is something that I got to see last year at the show. You guys kind of teased it a little bit, but now it's about to come out, right? Is, isn't it currently? Right. So we did a, we did a crowdfunding uh, campaign, and that we were able to satisfy all of that, um, which is great. We, uh, I think we exceeded our forecast in the first two hours. Um, so that is, uh, we're ramping up our production on that, and that's going to be going live in, uh, by, in the April time frame where we can have full, full production. And what's the, uh, the price on that? I know it was that's, initially going to be that's around... 159 like 159 for yep. a 3D printer. That yep. is unheard of. You can take it out of the box. It, that one even has a handle on it. It's that easy. So. I've got a couple of questions happening in the chat right now, and they're really fascinating. Gareth is asking... Um, oh, no, sorry, it was Dan Baker asking, is there a waste plan with 3D printing? Because I know we're using a lot of materials. Is, uh, is that something that exists? A waste plan? Yeah, so there are 3D, there are materials that start to use, um, that use some kind of recyc some recycled um, components. Obviously, so it's PLA and ABS, so you can recycle them like you would normally do it. Um, also, a lot of people are using, um, are melting down the extra, f any filament that's laying around and using that kind of as a glue to adhere if they're making a bigger project and piecing them together. Ah, got it. And you can use those, you know, biodegradable filaments on these printers, right? They're, yep. they're designed to work with just about anything. You can use biodegradable ones, water-soluble ones, and they'll work um, pretty much with, what I, with any of uh, our machines. And yeah, that's one of the things that I love about these, that you, you don't have to use proprietary filament with right. them, like you had to with MakerBots or some of the other printers on the market. Yeah, we really want to get, we want to do what we do really well, and we like, making, we like making hardware, and we want to get that out to as many people as possible. We think that this is something that is beneficial, and we, and we really want pe as many people to get it as, as can. I think Jerry here is asking, uh, what are the advantages versus the current types and the accuracy versus the current types from this one to what else is on the market? Yeah, so they're both uh, very accurate. So both of them are accurate to within uh, the, the thickness of a human hair. Um, and so you're, can, you're going to be able to pop out, get incredible details, really thin layer, layer heights, um, as well as XY um, dimensions. This one, you can actually get down to be about half, half the, the, the uh, width of a human hair. Um, they're both very, 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 very uh, detailed. But then on the other side of that, you said this thing can print that vase in about three hours? Right. Isn't that, that seems to me that that is so much faster than most 3D printers. Did you guys? You yeah, it's know, at least twice as fast as most 3D. How did you out there. manage that? That seems like a pretty difficult feat. That's uh, one of the benefits of and why we have the the Delta format, where it's coming from the three different dimensions. It can move around uh, a lot faster than um, something that's just going into. Gotcha. Um, 
In here already, people are asking, where will this product be available? J Jared's asking that one. Where yeah, so, can people get it? When can people get it? So you're always, it's going to be available on monoprice.com. Um, and that's one of the things that we've been around for 15 years. Um, and we have, uh, you know, we've been selling a lot of different types of technology products. We got into this because we make a lot of different types of products. And we use 3D printers. And so we um, wanted to make sure that you know, we saw that the innovation in this industry wasn't going as fast. Products weren't getting as cheap as what you see on TVs or other, ty you know, laptops and things like that. So we got into it a few years back because we really thought that there needed to be somebody to, to push it forward and to champion getting more people into the space. So you can get it on our site. You can get it. At, uh, it'll be available on Amazon and, and other retailers. I love it that you started making the things to make the things. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> the full chain of command. So yeah, I think it really took... Um, somebody like Monoprice to come in and actually make 3D printing cheap because so many startups have been trying to do this for years. Kickstarters have happened. That everybody promises like a sub $100 3D printer mm -hmm. and they always seem to have so much enthusiasm behind them. People back them like crazy but then they hit these manufacturing hit up, hiccups mm -hmm. and they end up, you know, the company flounders and the printer never comes out. So I think I, I'm, I'm very happy that Monoprice could kind of step in and, you know, you guys have the manufacturing shops to actually produce these things at scale and make them affordable for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's caused this last year to be really uh, busy. So like you said, um, uh, last year there's, appreciate uh, the, the uh, award last year on the Delta and uh, that, you know, our production has just been going through the roof. So now we've gone from not being really in the market a couple years ago to now being, uh, we just found out that we, some, we were told that we were number one in the world, and uh, so we, I think, are, and that's because we're, the market's growing. More people are getting in, and so that just pushes, that, that'll push, you know, manufacturing capabilities to the limit. And uh, so there's a lot of things that you have to do on that side that you maybe don't see um, when you're just looking at a Kickstarter. Totally. I call me naive here, but looking at this giant structure, I'm, where, do you, where do the materials go? And like most yeah. printers, when you run out of ink, how do you replace it? And like with, how easy is it that to source the materials and to keep it going? Yeah. So the, the, basic, the materials come from the, the uh, spool that's on top of it. Oh. The filament that comes through is kind of this, this thin plastic goes through the, uh, it starts to get pushed down through a motor and then comes down through the center um, the tube through the center comes down through the hot end and it's kind of like a hot glue gun where mm. it heats up at the end and starts to layer out a very precise um, uh, little thread of plastic and turns on and off as a, and pushes it on and off as, uh, as it moves around. It's like the modern day Rapunzel with the spinning wheel, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So the other thing that's blowing my mind right now is this is actually kind of quiet. Most yeah. 3D printers that I've ever used are just super loud and annoying sounding and not something that I would ever want to have like in my house. I would definitely just keep them in the garage away from where I could hear them. Yeah, so that's one of the great things. So that's not something that we go out and champion because we, you know, that should be assumed that you can actually use a 3D printer and it's not going to drown out a conversation. So, <laughs> but we have a great team and we have great partners and we're able to get this down. So that's not going to be an obstacle for people. So this can operate about 45, 44 dBs. A soft conversation is about 45 dBs. So you can actually have this. Rather than just having it in the garage, you can actually have this in the house. Got a question right here in the chat uh, from TJ Hill and Jared also saying this is a great question too. Who can service these printers? Are those providers already in place? I'm just wondering what the kind of lifespan is before um, you expect repair and maintenance. And Jared, uh, Jared saying, yes, what is the warranty on these products for those not familiar with Monoprice? Yeah, so we have a one-year warranty on all these types of products. Um, we have a team um, that can service it in California. Um, we have support in California. And uh, we have different, aside from just uh, servicing it, but we also have different um, uh, features and modifications that you can have. And we have different products, uh, different parts that are available for that if, if people want to modify it as well. Amazing. Thank you so much for stopping by our desk here at CES and talking Thanks to Digital Trends. It's so great. And well done on all the success with Monoprice. Looking forward to what else the Delta can get up to here. No smell at all either. Yeah. I can't smell it. I can't hear it. Surprising. There you go. Monoprice.com if you do want to check out more about that one. But coming up next, though, we're going to be chatting with the Digital Trends home editor, Kim Wetzel, about what's going on with Honeywell and Whirlpool. So don't miss out on that.